I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the uh, clan battles now that we're back. And forgive me, it's been away for a little bit, but now we're going to get back to it. Talking about the Land of Fire with a 7 versus 7 in today's clan battles. Before we begin, like, subscribe, bubble below. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel and the community making this a better place, having a good time, making good friends, and learning something at the same time. So let's get to it. The Land of Fire. Uh, I've been using Lucian's like if you can see right here, Lucian's a uh, very, very powerful destroyer, and uh, we're doing it with seven versus seven with the new clan battle season. As you can see in my previous video, they're starting to do these, uh, you know, kind of consumable gimmicks here. Kind of, I, don't know, I feel like we're kind of like Dungeons and Dragons casting spells back and forth. But anyways, let's digress. Uh, this is the um, the new way of playing things now with these extra consumables, and you're going to see some of the maybe different types of strategies now that we have these things and it's pretty interesting and i've noticed and again i'm always focused on the dd game uh role and how the gameplay with the D destroyer actually helps play out and and maybe changes some of the battle field uh, i would say situations and it's really pretty awesome but let's take a look at this situation right here we have seven versus seven two three two make up two destroyers three cruisers and battleships so when i say that two three two you understand so the basic uh, setup of how this one began is really we split the destroyers up, right? So we have two destroyers going, uh, one to cap Charlie, obviously, and one to go to Bravo. Obviously, they're there. But Charlie, we're going to use me as the Lucians right here because, quite honestly, I like Lucians a lot because of the concealment. I mean, you're basically not spotted uh, before anybody else because of the, Lucian. the Lucians has a great concealment, 5.8. And unless they're rolling with a Shimakaze or gearing, most of the time, Lucians is a pretty good darn uh, good destroyer. It's got the increased heal so a little bit more tankiness as you go into cap and it's got a 5.5 kilometer hydro so we like that idea better going to contest a heavily contested um a uh a capture point meanwhile we have the uh destroyer and i'm sorry a, the cruiser and battleship going into support in tow as well as another uh cruiser to uh to move in and support as well. Meanwhile, the Marceau, which is a heavy, heavy uh, destroyer, very, very powerful, can go straight to alpha spot, and if it needs to engage the destroyer, and I think that is a one versus one battle, I would choose that battle any day. Marceau going one to one versus the destroyer, pretty awesome. And of course, we have another cruiser player uh, supporting the Marceau with the battleship in tow to support the cruiser. So this is kind of the initial battle setup. What the enemy team actually decided to do is we're gonna see, hold on, forgive me, let me see if I can pick this out. What they had actually going on was we had their destroyer go one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And let's take away these arrows so you can see a little bit better here. So what happened was I moved into uh, Charlie Cap. Meanwhile, the Marceau caps Bravo, then takes on the Alpha and Spot, and as well as uh, Capture potentially, or take on a Destroyer head out one on one. As you can see, this actually played out in a uh, crazy manner where the Destroyers were actually going head to head, and I think the Marceau won that battle. That it is an easy battle right there. I'll take that any day. Once that Destroyer is wiped off the map, and the enemy only had basically a battleship and a cruiser left. Now, just because the uh, enemy with the new consumables, you can heal back health a lot if you coordinate with it you can actually call for your teammates to, in succession hey i need to heal i need to heal and actually keep these battleships and cruisers alive a lot longer and that allows them to push further down south um, or push further into the caps maintaining that survivability which i think is again i don't know do you really need a gimmick to do that or just make the destroyer and battleship or cruiser or battleship stronger i mean if you're saying that the, these these matchups aren't strong enough that they have to have extra consumables or heals and everything like that, then just give the ship extra heals or whatever off the bat in the first place or just make the ships tankier or do something about it because I think just by giving consumables says that, hey, there's something broken about the game that it's just not playable anymore. We have to introduce these gimmicks to, to make it. Anyways, the enemy team had a club bear, I believe, um, running really fast to the flank, which... I think that would be the play I normally would do. I wouldn't rush in right away with the club air. You would get spotted from the moon, take fire, and then you would egress the area and kind of be just out in the flanks here. Meanwhile, they also had their cruiser, which, which would actually sit in tank, which I really don't like, uh, but that's in the higher leagues. I've noticed a lot of, they're playing so conservative back here in the Typhoon Hurricane Leagues. They're just hugging islands and just really meticulously using uh, a lot of island cover and just trying to, I would say, use those Soviet biased cruisers to just tank and take as much damage as possible. Possible. And this is kind of how that setup would go. Uh, what we had going on with our team is we actually had a cruiser. 
and uh, supporting the battleship as well as a cruiser on the flank here. And then I would literally go in and cap and just hold right here because I had a 5.5 kilometer hydro. I outspotted the club air, so I wasn't really worried. If I got radar, I would have just pushed in, pushed out. And that's kind of how the stalemate uh, kind of turned out. I think overall the end of the game um, turns out that the enemy team kind of just pushed right through there. And it, it just took them out of the fight because now this cap is open and uh, allows our destroyer player to proceed to uh, go in and capture A from the back. And then they're just wasting so much time at Bravo that it, it would just be too much for them. And again, this is why I like the destroyer, uh, any kind of gunboat destroyer. I would literally spam the crap out of this first radar cruiser, take him out of the map. And then, of course, you have this other cruiser and battleship that I would also be tanking as well. So you're seeing I'm, I have two options of field of fire. I can torp. I can d gunboat DD. Meanwhile, my friendlies are also not taking fire, which is good. They, I want as many, much fire shooting at me so it negates any of my teammates losing their health points. And my teammates keep me alive by using those consumable heals. And throughout the game, you're going to see we're going to lay a lot of these um, minefields. Uh, so hold on here. Uh, so the minefields we laid were around here and here. Uh, meanwhile, some other players put minefields here and here. And that's kind of like the strategy I've seen a lot of the, the way the mines are putting placed or being placed in front of where we see locations of ships are going to go. Or for me personally, I would put the minefields anywhere on the outer perimeter of these um, cap points because that then just kind of deters, hopefully deters some of the ships from actually entering the cap, allowing me to cap for free. So let's take a look at the video and see how it goes. All right, we are here in the map Land of Fire and going to go ahead and speed through initial positioning right here. And you can see we're just uh, just like we talked about in the debrief, we're going to start with me going to ch and contest Charlie. You can see we're starting to put the minefields right in front of Charlie. They got a minefield in front of Alpha, and that's kind of how we normally would just to kind of deter any kind of push and i've noticed it is although it doesn't seem as it would be damaging to somebody but it is effective because a lot of cruiser and battleship players don't want to take on flooding or unnecessary damage and really to solve all that guys if you want to learn about it just have your team drop uh, asw depth charges in those minefields and they destroy them pretty well destroy a player if you are in a minefield drop all your depth charges as much as you can to get rid of them as much and as fast as possible and meanwhile, we over at the western side, we've got the Marceau. Again, pay attention to the mini-map. Those actually show you kind of where those depth charges are. Uh, I'm sorry, those uh, minefields are going, where the destroyer players are going. Look, we got the Marceau already taking on head-on the Daring right off the bat. And we also have uh, me spotting and keeping the Kleber uh, out on the flanks. I like the RPF. Again, I'm starting to run RPF on all my destroyers now. And I, I know a lot of you guys don't like that. Some of you don't like RPF and think it's a waste of a skill. I personally think situational awareness, especially at any kind of... Uh, uh, destroyer role that wants to either hunt destroyers or actually take them on or have situational awareness for your team is very good. Marceau takes out the daring right there. And again, why I like the, the RPF because the RPF allows me to go, okay, now I know a Kleber just judging by what happened where the transition, I know a Petro is 11.8. That then if it switches right there, I know now 11.7 is where the next closest target is to, uh, which is probably a Kleber. So I'm already knowing the Kleber is off to my right at about 11.6 ish. And then of course we got the Petro sitting and camping like I always hate and really I like the gunboat DDing ability right here because that allows me just to spam a cruiser non-stop because I don't want to be helpless defenseless and useless in a game I actually want to take the fight to the enemy and punish any kind of Soviet cruiser that wants to sit there and just kind of think that they can hold a flank just by sitting there and just spamming all right so I'm going to spam back and I'm going to reach out and touch him and really just start as many fires as I can on the Petro to get him burning down. And then the biggest weakness I've seen in the Soviet cruiser line is they just burn very, very well. Once they've used that damage con, boom, it takes may take a while, a little bit there to get it going. Petro has those limited amount of uh, damage cons, so I really uh, you know, know that, hey, that's a weakness right there, so we're going to play to it. Uh, we also have a consumable being used, ship speed increase, which is someone used right there. That is somewhat effective in turning circle radius as well. That is that kind of uh, more maneuverability, I think, better for the destroyer player. Maybe not so much for maybe a battleship or a cruiser. Uh, but like I said, we're, we're really just contesting and holding Alpha now. We're putting minefields all in front of it. Club Bear is still off to my right there with the RPF. Our Napoli's off to the eastern flank, while me supporting is a St. Vincent and a Des Moines. Nice. Meanwhile, at Alpha Cap right there, we, you're going to see the mini-map. We've got the enemy team just literally kind of stuck in the back of those islands and hugging them. And boom, Ohio takes out Petro right there from a downtown shot from across the map right there. And that's exactly why I like just t keeping the cruiser players so occupied with me that they forget about their flanks. And that is a very, very crucial role. Here comes a minefield uh, laying right here. Again, we're going to put one 
right in front of their cruiser player because again i don't put it on top of a, a, a cruiser player because or any kind of enemy ship because it takes time for it to develop and disperse i rather put it in front and have the maximum effect of it and that way it kind of prevents someone from moving or actually it gets a lot of hits as they move through it or dodge and it kind of keeps them preoccupied so i think that is probably the case of why wargaming introduced these consumables is just to give the ability to develop different strategies, put different structures up in the map, and kind of cause the enemy not to just sail straight into things and kind of have them think about where they're going rather than just hit the W key and plow through. So right now, we're again, we're just still holding Charlie. Now, this is also annoying for a Battleship player, having a DD gunboat main person literally sitting from behind cover and just spamming like crazy. Meanwhile, I have my 5.5 caliber hydro. In case it's used, I can always spot somebody that way. We're being radared by the Puerto Rico. Not too much of a concern because I've already had situation where to know that there's um, terrain to my right that allows me to have line of sight distance blockage between me and that Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, we're going to see if we can start as many fires as we can on the Montana which is proving to be very difficult here. I'm noticing it is, man, the amount of firepower I'm putting down on this guy, I don't know why I'm not able to start that much of a fire. Again, he takes a shot at me, which is good. One less shot at um, my my friendly teammates, and he only scratched the paint right there. Meanwhile, other, his other five shells kind of hit all around and pretty terrible like that. So we're actually causing so much of a uh, trouble ruckus right here where we're causing Montana to have to rethink his ability to push. He's probably not going to push. He's just kind of nosing in, trying to pretend like he's a John Barr or something, and that's fine. And that's what we're doing. Our role is to really just sit here, absorb damage. Illusion's great for this HP, massive HP. I can really reprint the ship with these uh, heals. I like Illusion's a lot. Very, very powerful this day, day and age in, in the clan battles. I think Illusion is an underestimated ship. Very, very, very strong. The AP is strong, especially with the gun reloads. You can get this thing to really melt uh, destroyers. And also you got the deep water torpedoes, which are hard to detect. They only go out to 11, which is still decent enough for what I need to do. And it, it deters enough people right there because guess what? Most of the time, these engagements are uh, that if I do go in this close or around the seven to 11 kilometer range, which gives me a great ability uh, to use them and uh, use them wisely. Again, we took a shot right there from the Montana, taking over four, look at my potential damage, 467,000 right there in the first seven minutes of the game. And again, I'm doing this because that's my, my purpose as a destroyer player. You want to be there to not only uh, spot, cap, and do everything like a destroyer player should, but you're also taking damage that you can cautiously, of course. You don't want to just take unnecessary damage, but you're get, everybody's shooting at you, and you're the biggest distraction on the map. That's why I like the DD role so much because it is a very big, impactful player role that allows you to do what you need to do for the team. Uh, so we look on the western side while we're still spamming this Montana. We've got the St. Vincent Napoli on the western flank pushing through uh, against our Moscow. Meanwhile, the Ohio Marceau are in kind of full retreat, also getting minefield as well. And you can see right now that their team is actually saying we're about to lose this match. We're just winning on points at this point. I mean, the higher leagues right now are mostly won just by the stalemates and just winning on points and capping first. And uh, really, the Puerto Rico has no other option other than let's push and uh, see if we can get something going. Otherwise, we're going to lose this round. That's what I'm thinking that the team made, the teams are doing because they're, they're all coordinating their push right now because they have to. They're running out of time. We're at 917 now, 498 left, and uh, it's becoming a very, very detrimental thing for the enemy team. We're going to continue shooting, and here's the power of the AP. Watch this. Switching to AP right now. And look, we're, we can really take some damage on these cruiser bows. And look, boom, 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 1452 damage right there. That is power. Power right there. So if you're a destroyer player looking to use your guns to maximum damage, you can do that. You can shoot cruisers. Don't be afraid. As long as you're aiming at the right, correct spots, like the bows of them, or even the citadels, if you can penetrate that, and you're gonna get these nice, juicy pen damage. And look, the Puerto Rico is still paying attention to me, not paying attention to anybody else firing at them, and we take the kill, steal kill right there from our friendlies, and that's exactly why the destroyer player role. You are the coolest distraction on the map, and it helps your team so, so well, and I like it a lot. Now, again, we're going to go back to farming the Montana. Now, we're 101,000 damage, and why not take some more damage? Look, Montana is still firing at us. I mean, either we just pissed them off so much, or we're just the best uh, distraction on the map right now. We're in the middle of a minefield right here, so again, you should be, and I make my mistake on my part, I should be hitting the G key and trying to depth charge as much of the, um, the minefield as possible to get this thing cleared for my friendlies and get us out of here, or even for me, that is. And we can see that in the western, as we're still spamming the Montana here, western flank is still being distracted. Notice the enemy team is so hard uh, to push our friendlies that they would not rather cap that spot. They'd rather just go for the kills at this point. Marceau is going to hit the uh, island and do a little ring around the rosy kind of cover, and we lose our Ohio to the Napoli, but not after we torp. I believe Marceau sent a bunch of torps 
right into the St. Vincent and takes him out in a minute here. Meanwhile, Montana and I are splashing the crap. And there, yeah, there he goes, Marceau taking on the St. Vincent. Very good job right there. Meanwhile, we're taking on the Montana, still firing at us, it is. And we're taking at least, look, we are up to 718,000 potential damage, which means we did our part, our role right there. Notice the HP being partially restored is from our team consumables right there. So it's a good idea to save those in your hip pocket and coordinate when you need those, when you have a player that's almost dead. Keeping your players alive in the long run is the name of the game, and that's how it really you survive the match by keeping destroyer players mostly alive or any other teammate that has radar and so forth. High firepower, high damage, and they take them out right there, and that is the game victory right there. 1,000 points, 497 in that amount of time, and that is how we win that battle. Hope you enjoy that match. Let me know what you think about that strategy in the comments below. What have you seen in this map? And again, it's always different strategies and, and different players and different styles. I like it. That's why I like World of Warships a lot. Every match is always different. People do different types of things. And if you see something interesting or out there or new, let us, uh, us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for supporting the channel. You guys have been a great community. Let's build it and make it better. And as always, hope you guys are doing well. Say hi to me out there when you see me. And stay safe. We'll see you soon. Cheers.